This video does more with scientific notation. As you can see in this table, we're getting to powers of 10 that have negative exponents. So when we played with scientific notation before, we had positive exponents, and our numbers were really big. And as you can see in the last column where you have decimals, as these exponents get bigger in terms of the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you see that the decimal values actually get smaller. So we can make the uh, connection that a negative exponent actually makes uh, the decimal or the number smaller. So um, in number one, as we divide the object into more and more parts, what do you notice about the decimal value? Well, as it's one billionth, if you break it up into nine parts, right, you have a much smaller decimal. And you'll notice that the number of, as a fraction, one billionth has the number of zeros in the denominator uh, is actually the same as the exponent. So the negative number tells you the number of zeros in the denominator, and it tells you how many places past the decimal you're going to have. So in this case, we'll have eight zeros and then a one. So the one is actually the ninth place, decimal place past the decimal point. And when we do uh, number two, which is on the next page, it talks about powers of 10. And I kind of talked about that where the exponent is the number of zeros in the denominator. Um, and so whenever you see a negative exponent, that implies a smaller number, a number less than one. You can see this last column, they are all less than one. So negative exponent, less than one. Now, in number three, which is smaller, one-tenth or one ten thousandths? Well, let's look at those two numbers. So uh, we have one-tenth is here, and then one ten-thousandth is here. Now, if you compare them by decimal, you can see that uh, 0 .0001 is less than 0.1, smaller. So therefore, one ten-thousandth would be smaller than one-tenth. Um, and that's kind of the easiest way to look at it. Uh, in number four, it says, uh, based on your table and your knowledge of large numbers, what power of 10 would be associated with one trillionth? Well, if you remember that the word trillion means 12. And just to uh, refresh, billion is nine. When I look at this table and I look at one billionth, billion is nine, billionth is negative nine. So trillionth would be times 10 to the negative 12, because trillionths is uh, the 12. And in decimal form, well, we would have 11 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and the 12th number would be our 1. So that would be 1 trillionth. Now, in playing with scientific notation, recall again that you want to have the first number between 1 and 10. So in this first problem, we want to move the decimal one place over to make it 3.65. And we only moved our decimal one spot, so our exponent's a 1. But when you look at a number in standard form, 0.365 is less than 1. If you are less than 1, then your exponent should be negative. If you are bigger than 10, your exponent will be positive, just like we did earlier in our scientific notation problems. So in part B, we want to move our decimal to be after the 2, so 2.05. It's pretty easy to see that 0 .000, that is smaller than 1, so we are going to have a negative exponent, and we're moving it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places, and therefore I'm going to have negative 7. Sorry, stop moving there. But I moved it seven places to get after the two, and therefore it's negative seven. In letter C, we have another number less than one. So if I move it one, two, three places, I get 3.14 times 10 to the negative third. And it's negative again because my number is less than one. Now in letter D, 1,234.76, that's greater than 10. So when I move this x or this decimal point, 1.23476, I moved it three places. And that number is larger than 10, so my exponent will be positive. Now let's go the other way, standard form. In letter A, the exponent is negative. That means my number is going to be small. To make a number smaller, we're going to move to the left. So I take this decimal and 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to start with the decimal point. I have two empty humps, which is zeros, and then my 7, 6, 4. 
In letter B, I'm moving it seven places to the left. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And then that seventh place is where that four is because the four is one of the decimal places being moved. In letter C, I'm only moving it one place to the left. So point one, zero, four, five. And again, when you have a negative exponent, look, all three, A, B, and C are all less than one. Now in letter D, I have a positive exponent. So it's positive, it's getting bigger. So my decimal goes three places to the right, and I end up with 2,470. Bigger than 10 because of a positive exponent. And then let's do some calculation with scientific notation. Now if you're dividing, whatever number comes first will go on the top. 2.58 times 10 to the fifth divided by 1.24 times 10 to the eighth. Now the rule, same rules apply. I divide my numbers. 2.58 divided by 1.24 leaves me with 2.08. I did round. Times 10 to the 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And there is my answer in scientific notation. If we had put that in standard form, we would have a number less than 1 because of the negative exponent. In letter B, we're multiplying. So I'm going to multiply 4.5 times 2.3 and get 10.35 times 10 to the negative 5 plus 10 is 5. Now that is not in scientific notation because my first number is bigger than 10. If it's bigger than 10, my exponent's going to go up. So I move it one place. So I add 1 and I end up with 1.035 times 10 to the 6th. Again, bigger than 10 means positive exponent. It goes up. And letter C, again, we're dividing. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 4.2 times 10 to the 4th divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3rd. I put my first two numbers together, and I end up with 2.625 times 10 to the 4 minus negative 3. Two negatives is a positive, and I end up with 10 to the 7th.